Okay, I think we're going to get started. We have, uh, looks like we have a good number of people that are on. So I just want to say welcome to everyone. And we're just so excited to be here tonight. As some of you might know, back in April, I partnered with the Wappinger Central School District to host a skilled trades fair in an effort to give young adults and teens uh, a firsthand look at the many opportunities in the trades that are available right here in our local community. And the response to that event was absolutely amazing. But then the COVID pandemic forced us to put it on hold. So I knew we had to get creatives that we would be able to deliver this information directly to our local students and our families. And as you'll hear tonight, there's a huge need in the Hudson Valley for skilled tradespeople, which can also mean a great paying career with opportunities to grow. For those of you that know me know that I didn't take the traditional career path and I want students to know that they don't have to take a one size fits all approach to planning their own futures. And that's such an important message, I think, especially now when we've all been inside uh, through these uh, months with COVID and isolated and you know you can really start to think about things that um, different things different paths that you might want to take and after we saw the need of what happened in our community with uh, the lack of manufacturing and just so many businesses so uh, throughout the past few weeks I've been in interviewing industry leaders from across the Hudson Valley that'll help students learn more about the various trades and have been seeking the best advice for students looking to get involved. So now tonight, we've brought a few folks together to talk about the work they do, the opportunities available, and to answer questions from community members. So I am so excited to introduce you to the all-star lineup we have here tonight. Uh, we have Alexis from DBS Remodel, Dave Stewart from DS Electric, Larry Holsapple from Quality Environmental uh, Solutions and Technologies Incorporated, Dustin Folks from Folks Home Services. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Alexis from DBS Remodel. Hi, Alexis. Hi there. Thank you so much for having me. I so appreciate it. And thank you, everybody who's joining us tonight. Um, as Sue mentioned, uh, my name is Alexis. I work with DBS Remodel as their marketing director. Uh, DBS Remodel is a full service residential remodeling company. We have been proudly servicing Hudson Valley residents for over 35 years. Um, when it comes to residential remodeling, we personally do kitchens, bathrooms, basements, porches, pretty much any space in between from interior to exterior. We are also CAP certified and Universal Design certified, so we can also make a home ADA compliant. Um, getting into this industry, you know, as you mentioned, there is definitely a demand for uh, people to go into the trades industry. Um, for us, there's been a long time stigma with um, the construction industry not only being uh, for, you know, dirty jobs, but necessarily being for, um, you know, the career path that um, not pe people sometimes overlook. So for us, it's one of those things where we always try to shed a lot of light on that where it's not just swinging a hammer. There's so much more in this industry and specifically within the industry that I work in. So I'm a marketing director, but there's lead carpenters, there's estimators, there's designers, there's project managers. Um, there's so many different paths that you can take when it comes to this industry. Um, for me, I have a background in marketing and advertising, and I've always had an interest in um, real estate. So I was able to blend both of that together to, you know, find sort of the perfect fit for me. Um, but that doesn't mean that that's not the case for you. If you like being hands-on with things, if you like building things, if you are somebody who likes to have a different scenery every single day, this might be something that you might want to explore because every single day is different. You know, one day you can be working on a kitchen, the next day you could be working on a bathroom. Um, so you always have something different in terms of what your setting can be. But for DBS, uh, we always go back down to our core values in terms of not only what we want to bring in on a job, but bring within our culture of our, um, you know, what we work within. So for example, like it's important for our company to always have a really good family-like culture, a culture where we feel like we are growth oriented. Um, we're all passionate we all have integrity and discipline um, so for us when it comes to not only getting into this career we also want somebody who um, wants to sort of meet those career goals and have those same share those same career uh, core values with us but also somebody who um, you know wants to 
develop their career, whether that's in, you know, necessarily the building aspect, or maybe that's in the designing or estimating aspect. Um, we are excited for the youth to get involved in this because there are so many paths, like I said, that you can get involved in. And for us, we just want somebody who, who is willing to not necessarily get their hands dirty, but they're looking to grow and explore what's going to be the right suit for them because there are so many different things that they can do. And um, there isn't a lot of light shed on that. So for us, we want to bring that education there. And, you know, for, we always just tell everybody, come by, stop in. We want to show you, we want you to get, you know, get you involved. You can sit with me for the day. You can go out to our job sites. We want to have candidates get excited about this. Um, so yeah, that's that's it in, the, in a nutshell in the shortest version. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was muted. Thank you, Alexis. Of course. Great job. And I forgot to mention to people, if you have a question, you can enter your questions in the Q uh, in the Q and A, uh, and you know we'll be able to answer those at the end of this. So right now, I'm going to uh, introduce you to Dave Stewart from DES Electric. Hi, Dave. How you doing? Hi, Sue. Great. Thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Dave Stewart, DES Electric of the Hudson Valley. Uh, I'm an electrical contractor based at a high park here in the Hudson Valley. Um, well, first, I just want to really thank uh, Senator Serino and her office for putting this together and uh, bringing us all together to kind of talk in a positive way about the trade. Uh, so often, the trade is looked at in a negative way. You know, everybody kind of has a negative story to think about trade people. And um, I really appreciate you and your office putting this together. So, so thank you. Um, I'm an electrical contractor. Um, I, base, I focus on residential work. Um, I, uh, I started out in the trade, well, actually, I started out in the military. I went after high school, I went to the Marine Corps. And uh, really, the way I got into the electrical trade was my recruiter asked me what I wanted to do in the military. And I honestly had no idea. I had no idea there were different jobs in the military. So he asked me what I wanted to do um, in the Marine Corps. And I said, I have no idea. He said, what are you doing in your free time? He said, I said, I'd like to play with my car stereo. And he said, you're an electrician. So 20 plus years later, here I am. Um, I went through a five-year apprenticeship program in New York State after I got out of the Marine Corps. Um, I did that with a large electrical contractor doing all commercial work, uh, which I, I did really enjoy. But now, what, what, as I started opening VF Electric about 14 years ago, I really, um, I, I fell in love with working with customers. And um, that's something that I think a lot of people don't do, especially a lot of trades people don't enjoy doing because it can be challenging. Um, but that's something I really enjoy doing. And doing that being in the, uh, in the residential field, I get to work with a lot of homeowners who get to be in and out of, you know, everything from, you know, small apartments to multi-million dollar mansions and just doing an array of different types of work. And it's really, I, I really get joy out of it. So uh, the electrical trade is a vast, vast trade. You know, I mean, all this, there's so many good opportunities in any of the trades, but the electrical trade as, uh, as one, you can do anything from big commercial work to small residential stuff, changing outlets. And, um, you know, when, when we're looking for people, um, I mean, you know, you know, obviously the dream is to find somebody with 10 years of experience and great attitude who's going to work. But when we're looking for apprentices, when we're taking people on, we're really just looking for people with the right attitude. Somebody who just wants to get up and knows that they're going to have to do to work on time every day and be there with a good attitude and you know be respectful because we're in in and out of a lot of people's homes every single day. So to me and my company, um, our company motto is "Leave it better than you found it." So we try to leave every every home, every instance, and I live my life that way. Leave it better than you found it. So, uh, you know, we're, we're really out there looking for people. The trades are dying out and, you know, if the kids don't start getting into it now. We're going to be in a really bad spot. And there's really good opportunities. I have uh, my project manager now. He started out in the field and he, he has a degree. He went to school for business and it wasn't the right fit for him. But, you know, back when I went to high school and back when he was in high school, they told everybody they had to go to college and they had to, and going into trades was looked down on. I remember when I was in high school, the kids that went to both you know, they, they would send the troublemakers to both you. And it really, uh, it kind of created a bad thought of the trade in general. And here I am, you know, 20 plus years later, 
loving the trade and really just loving the company that I've been able to fortunate to build. And, um, you know, there's good opportunity out there. And, you know, he's making more now than he, than some of his friends that he went to college with. And he's just doing intellectual work, you know, he's actually running the office. So lots of good opportunities, whether you want to, you know, turn a wrench or work on a keyboard or do marketing like uh, Lex does or whatever it is. So thanks again, Sue. I appreciate you having us here. Thank you very much, Dave. And uh, now I'd like to introduce Larry Holsapple from Quality Environmental Solutions and Technologies. Larry, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Thank you for having us. Um, you know, we started this, uh, I guess, let's just start. I'm I, the, uh, the tradesperson that, I guess, made the American dream. And I worked in the demo for other people. Uh, uh, I came to this area and uh, started working for an environmental company. And again, it's a trade where you learn. Uh, and the good news, as opposed to college, is you get paid while you learn. Um, we started this business 22 years ago, almost 23 years ago. We have 20. And we do a whole host of um, commercial and residential construction. Um, what's neat about it is, uh, you know, you get to do something a little bit different every day. Um, you're always learning. Um, and although we do have some positions that are degree positions, we have certified industrial hygienists. We have a guy with a master's in environmental. I'd say probably 50% of my workforce is tradesmen out on the job, taking samples, figuring out the problems. Uh, you know, jumping in dirty holes one day and sitting in a boardroom the next. So there's always, uh, you know, a good host of uh, issues and problems that come up every day. But I do notice that if you look around the construction sites, the medium age, you know, used to be a lot younger. Now I would say I'm probably the average age of the guy on the job site. So there's, you know, there's a huge potential for uh, young people to get involved in the trades, whether it be electrician, uh, plumbing, re remodeling, um, because they're just not, you know, the people are just not getting involved. Um, I was actually pretty happy. My son is my, my youngest child, uh, wants to be a heavy equipment op operator. So uh, he's going to post this next year and he's Not a troubled kid, uh, good, you know, uh, from some of the weekends in 40 foot motorhomes and going to their second houses. So, uh, you know, there's definitely, uh, it's, it's a good way to earn a living, an honest living. And, you know, you get to enjoy every day if it's what you like to do. Thank you very much, Larry. And uh, now we have Dustin Folks from Folks Home Services. Hi, Dustin. How you doing? Hello, Sue. Yeah, thanks for putting this together. Yeah, this is awesome because I, I think the trades definitely um, need some love. So uh, my name is Dustin Folks. I'm from Folks Home Services. I've been in the heating and air conditioning business for over 30 years. I know I'm only like 25, but I've been in this business for 30 years. Um, and it's been a great career for me. I've owned my company for 23 years here in Fishkill. Um, started out um, with one truck, really no business plan. I was just gonna work hard and just keep working harder. And 23 years later, I got 25 employees. So I started, you know, I kind of wasn't college material myself, or I didn't want to go to college out of high school. So my grandfather was in an oil company. That's how I kind of got started in this business. And I've um, just built it up over the years. Um, so I, I feel like it's a great, you know, all the trades are great. You know, everybody on this panel is, you know, has great trades. Any trade's great. You know, I don't necessarily think college is the end all be all. I mean, if you want to be a lawyer or a doctor, yes, you have to go to college. But I think, you know, HVAC, plumbers, roofers, um, electricians, whatever it is, is um, great trades. I mean, people need it. Um, you know, we're coming through a, you know, we're in a pandemic and my business has grown 25, 30% when some businesses are not surviving. So, you know, we're an essential business. We're always busy. Um, and, um, you know, trades, trades very good. Um, some of the stuff that we look for um, when we're training or hiring and, and we, we, 
hire a lot of people with no experience. Um, 75% of my field workforce is probably came through my system with little to no experience. So, um, you know, we look for people that have the right attitudes first, that want to show up for work, that are coachable. Um, we don't even necessarily, we've taken people that are, have no experience at all. I mean, good, good ways to get some experience would be, you know, schooling would be through Dutchess County BOCES. Uh, Dutchess Community College has an air conditioning um, course, and then there's places like Lincoln Tech, but that's not the end all be all either. If you have the right attitude, I like, you know, like I said, 75% of our workforce is, um, has no experience. I mean, don't get me wrong. We take experienced people too. We like that. Um, but there's just less and less experienced people usually with good attitudes. So um, the right attitude, willing to work, willing to work, be coachable are a few of the um, things that we look for when we're, um, you know, we're hiring and we regularly hire, like, again, I said multiple times, people with no experience in my business and my business pays six, six figures. So it's not, it's a very good job in my opinion. Um, you know, like I think some Dave might've said, uh, you can go to college and you don't get, you know, four years of college, you come out with a lot of debt and you don't necessarily make that kind of money. So, I mean, we work hard, don't get me wrong. We do get a little dirty. Um, but I think the upside potential is, um, is there and, um, you know, it's, you know, it, it's great for people looking, you know, not sure what they want to do. You know, like I said, college is good for a lot of people. It's not for everybody. Everybody doesn't have to go to college to have a real good, successful career. Um, you know, so that's kind of what we do. We're here in Fishkill, you know, doing heating and air conditioning, looking for hardworking, hardworking people. And it's, it's, you know. And there's, you know, if you're willing to work, there's, there's always trades people looking for work, with whatever, whatever your profession you might be, whether it's Request, DS Electric, DBS, a roof or plumber, that doesn't matter. Um, you know, the, the, the trades are always looking for new people and, you know, to get into it. So again, thank you. I appreciate it. And um, thank you. Thank you, Dustin. And, you know, and it's great listening to everybody and, you know, the way that you started out and like Larry said, you know, like the American dream. And I think a lot of people want that because you could even go to work, right, for someone, be an apprentice, Dave, like you mentioned, and then look at open up your own business, you know, that it, that's awesome. So we do have some really good questions. People are plugging them in. So here is the first one um, from Mike. I have a question for a quality environment. What do you do exactly? And what does your company do? I'm into environmental work, but don't know what options there are. So there we go, Larry. So we do uh, testing for <clears throat> um, asbestos, lead, mold, underground storage tanks. Uh, we do a lot of safety work for indoor air quality, uh, mold assessments. Um, and we service probably about an hour radius from our office. As far as uh, the qualifications, uh, again, some of the positions are degreed, but there's a lot of uh, positions that aren't in our industry. Um, you know, a good knowledge, uh, you know, a good math knowledge, or even a very good building knowledge. If you know how a building goes together, it's easy to inspect it to make sure, you know, to find the hazardous materials, whether it's PCB and electrical transformers or uh, mercury switches in uh, thermostats. Um, so that's a lot of the, uh, you know, the sci it is a science-based industry, but it's kind of a mix between construction and science-based. So where you would start, um, there are several local environmental companies that uh, no experience is necessary. Um, you can start on the ground floor. Um, and, you know, again, it's a trade that's learned, um, you know, over the years and experience. Thank you, Larry. And um, people are asking questions and this is going to be, it is recorded. So um, I know Dave, you had answered one of the questions. I see Corey asked a great question, right? Which is uh, kind of about the stigma thing that I spoke about. My parents are, put, are pushing me to go to college, but I'm ready to be working. How can I talk to them about it? And I know Dave, you answered in the chat, but do you want to say what you said and then open it up to everybody else too? All right, there we are. 
Um, yeah, sorry, the questions were coming in. I wasn't sure we were supposed to answer them or not, so I answered Sorry about that. But I just said, um, no, uh, I said, hi, Corey. Um, I'd let them know that you're serious about the career and the trade. Talk to them about your long-term plans. Let them know that you're not just looking for an easy way out and you know it's going to be a tough road, but you're willing to do the work. Um, you know, because sometimes parents might just think that, you know, you're, you're just being lazy and you don't want to go to college. And I mean, maybe that's the case, but and it's very, very possible it's not the case that you're lo just looking to do something different. And if your parents understand that, maybe that might help them. Um, take them to places like DBS, my office, if you come in and check it out, that you come down with your parents. Um, you know, we can set up things. I know the Chamber of Commerce has uh, work programs where, you know, I'm, I'm not sure how old they are, but if you're still in uh, high school, you can uh, do some apprenticeship hours through that. So, I mean, you know, let them know that you're serious. Not, you're not just looking for an easy way out, I would say would be a good starting point. Did anybody else want to answer that too, or? Uh, I think I'll, I'll just go ahead, Alexis. Scott, sorry. Uh, well, it's 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 interesting because it's along the same lines of what Dave said. You know, when it comes to talking specifically with your parents about your career path, I think you just first of all have to have an open and honest conversation with them about where not only do you see yourself, but where do you see yourself in the next year, two years, three years, five years, whatever the case may be because that might open them up to, you know, taking not only what you're saying seriously, but if you have a plan in mind for yourself, if you're saying, you know, I really do want to pursue a career in um, electric, or I want to, you know, pursue a career in remodeling, um, have a plan laid out for yourself. Um, and just tell them, you know, this is something that I'm willing to work hard at. I, you know, I, I want to explore the trades, there's a demand for it. And I know that not only am I going to be able to work hard in it, but I'm going to be able to, you know, pursue something that there are growth opportunities and not taking on that debt either. I think it's important that, you know, when it comes to the career path and in the trades, that you understand that not every job requires you to have these four-year degrees and, and all of this debt. If you don't see yourself doing a four-year school, that's okay. Um, but have that conversation with your parents and say, you know what, if I go to a four-year school, I come out and I'm not happy with it, or I'm just going to go into the trades, you know, I might have all of this debt and I would rather start my career now while I don't have that debt and I can really grow into the position that I see for myself. Anybody else? Or? Yeah, I, I would just going to echo the same thing Alexis and Dave said. You know, obviously you have to speak with your parents because sometimes parents think you have to go to college. And but if you know you're looking to do something else, then college might not be for everybody. You know, but obviously that's something you really have to speak to your parents about um, because they might have one one way of thinking. But you know, uh, you know, I'm a success story, Dave. You know, and without going to college it's not the end all be all and, and like alexis says you don't have to come out with a hundred thousand dollars of debt uh, to find out you want to be um, an electrician um so um you know it's really an at-home conversation those are all good points and now um mike has another question is BOCES the only way to get into a trade i'm a senior and never did BOCES because i never thought i wanted to do something like this but I've been so bored at home with remote school. I don't want to be on a com uh, I don't want to be on a computer. So who'd like to answer that? Yeah, I, I could jump in. So it, it's Mike. It's tricky to just find companies when you don't have experience. I, I'll admit we willingly and like to hire people without experience, but you don't always know. But BOCES is not the end all be all. I mean, I've hired people with no experience and no trade school really strictly on the attitude. Um, and it's tricky to get the companies like myself, you know, because we have to know you. There's so many people that really, I, I don't think there's a shortage of people looking for jobs, but I'm, we're always looking for the right people, I should say. So they're, they're, they're out there. Um, but both season not the end all be all. If you had the right attitude and you could convey that to, you know, say myself or Dave or, or whoever, I mean, we're, we, we hire off of attitude and have some, you know, hands-on ability. You might not have much, but maybe you've worked around the house with some tools or something. We, for the most part, will, we can teach anybody, you know, if they have the right attitude. So BOCES is one avenue. In my profession, Lincoln Tech is another avenue that does a bunch of different trades, including electrical. 
but um, it's not even the end all be all. Just finding the right company that wants to invest in you. We, we do a lot of investing where we send p- young people out and we pay them to go to training. Um, so it's, um, it's all on the attitude, you know, and, you know, and, just and finding the company. Building on that, um, I just had the guy that hired to start, actually start next week um, talking about attitude. He, you know, he applied and there's a few people that applied as, as a helper, you know, without any experience. And that's what a helper is little to no experience um but this guy called three or four times and then i didn't re- you know I, I honestly didn't return the call because we had some people that had experience and i said well let me check them out first and um he, he stopped by the office he came in and just said hey i sent out a couple of you know i'm not trying to be annoying i'm not trying to but he said I, i'd like to know if there's any opportunity for me here so i took him to my office right now i said you know what i got i got 15 minutes right now let's talk and he had the right attitude and i hired him on the spot i mean you got to be you got to show that you want the job. Nobody's going to bang down your door to try to get you to work for them. And if you show the initiative to get the job, if you don't show the initiative, to get the job, there's no way we're going to show the initiative while you're at work. So that's, that's something important as well. And I think if I could just jump in to make a point that <clears throat> you have to manage your expectations. You're not going to get a job at DS Electric and be an electrician on Tuesday. You're going to start at the beginning. You know, you're not going to come to my place and be, you know, an environmental uh, technician day two. It's going to take a little while and it's a lot of hard work. Uh, Learn just like you're going to school. And, uh, you know, eventually as you do better and as you retain, you do more and more. I mean, you know, they just, they, you know, we see a lot of young guys or young people come in and day two, they want to be president and they're telling us that what we're doing wrong with our company. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta start slow, take your time and, and have patience. Okay, and then um, from Corey, it says, great to see a woman on here. Any advice for women getting in the field? Um, So when it comes to men or women getting hired with our company, especially if you want an entry-level position, first of all, we do not discriminate against anybody, regardless of their gender. As long as you have some basic knowledge of, you know, hand tools and you know how to read a tape measure, we are willing to take the time to train you and be coachable. Um, For women, I think that right now is a time um, with everything going on with HGTV, they're seeing a lot more women in this field. Um, I would say the best thing to do is not be afraid to be in a quote unquote male dominated industry. I know that my boss personally loves to hire women um, specifically because of the fact that there aren't a lot of women in this construction field. So whenever we get the opportunity to interview somebody who is a female and that wants to go into a labor position, he always is very eager to hire them because of the fact that he is all about the women empowerment. Um, but really, I would just say, don't be afraid to be in a male dominated industry. We've um, had customers that have told us specifically that they've you know, hired DBS because of the fact that we do have females in our company that are either working in the field or working in sales um, and just uh, running the office essentially. Um, I work with five other people in my office and four out of the five um, are all female. So we essentially run everything on the back end, Um, but just don't be afraid. You know, there's a a position for all of us. And um, like I said, we are not going to discriminate against anybody um, regardless of their gender. We just want somebody who has those soft skills that we all have been talking about, the soft skills of being coachable and having, you know, some sort of basic knowledge of what they're about to get into. For me, it's about, you know, if you can read a tape measure and you can swing a hammer, that's great, but it's also being coachable and having a great attitude and being punctual is my personal big one. Um, if I'm interviewing you, please just be on time. But uh, but really having those soft skills is very, very important because of the fact that we want people who are eager to get involved in this, um, in this career. That's great. And I just got a question that was texted to me and it says, are there fields that are, are- and demand more than others. Electrical. Everybody got electrical. <laughs> <laughs> I think all the service, our home services are in demand. You know, I think everybody on here can use people. So whether, I don't think there's one, in my opinion, I don't know if there's one more than another, but I think a lot of trades are always looking for people in general. Yeah, I think the big thing also right now is um, not only is there such a demand within all of our fields for people to get into the trades industry, but 
right now, a lot of homeowners are not only in their homes, but they're working on their homes because, you know, it's just them, the four walls. So everybody wants to remodel. Everybody wants to upgrade, you know, their electrical and their HVAC, and they want to upgrade their home to make sure it is um, environmentally friendly. Um, but there is... I wouldn't say that there's one demand over the other. Everybody's at their home right now wanting to improve it. So um, so if this is the field that you want to go into, like I think we're all willing to have anybody come in right now and, and just have the conversation with us because we want we want youth in this industry for sure. Yeah, that's very true. I just had somebody ask me another question. They said, my son wanted to go into the trades and I noticed that the guidance counselor was trying to steer him away, which was frustrating. How can we get the schools to play a more active role in helping kids get into these areas? And that's really interesting, you know, because uh, when I first spoke about this to Wappingers, uh, they were really excited about doing this um, pilot program. So it was great. But of course, COVID hit and then we're doing it this way to start off with. But um, so who would like to answer that question? Like, how can we get the schools to play a more active role in helping the kids get into these areas? I don't know if I have an answer for it, but I think it's, I think it would be good if the guidance counselors push to the trades, that would be a start. I don't know what the answer to the question is, but if the guidance counselors are pushing kids to go to college, it's, it's certainly not good for the trades. You know, I don't, I don't know. That's, I, don't know what the I, I think also too, is just um, the, first of all, like pretty much what Dustin said, if, if the high schools reached out to us and said, Hey, we need to have, more trades representatives at our career fairs or be involved in even, you know, on a Zoom meeting or, or at the school or whatever the case may be, if those opportunities are more readily available to us, I could tell you at, at least, I know on behalf of myself, but I'm sure I can speak for at least us and, and Dave, we would definitely be involved if those opportunities were given to us um, because we feel so passionate about getting the youth involved in this. So that would be the first step. And, and then also, if, um, I don't have any children, but if my, my child's guidance counselor is telling me that, I would just turn around and just tell them, but this is what my kid wants to do. And you're supposed to be an advocate for my child just as much as I am when it comes to their education. So um, I would have that, op that conversation as well. Well. And on, on top of that, you know, us as tradespeople, it's our responsibility too to be out there and talking, to, you know, being involved in the schools and, you know, taking some time. We're all super, super busy, so it's hard to make that time. But I know um, once a year I go and talk at FDR here in Hyde Park and um, it's, I talk to an, uh, a math class, and it's probably not a lot of the kids in that class, it's kind of uh, advanced math class I speak in. But I speak in that every year and I just talk to them. And if we're not being involved in the schools and if the guidance counselors aren't seeing positive um, contractors and positive trades people out there and what they have is that stigma that is still out there of all these bad ones, then they're not going to be apt to be pushing there. So I mean, it's our responsibility to get in there and kind of talking to the school district. I know um, I'm in Rotary with uh, Senator Serena and uh, our, uh, our local. Uh, um not the who is it who is um the chamber uh, the chamber of commerce no in, in rotary uh avina is on uh, is in there but she's, she's not actually the superintendent she's like the assistant superintendent but you know just being involved oh, oh, with, yeah. with in the schools and getting a positive name out there for the good trade people because there are a lot of bad trade people out there unfortunately and that's all they know about them they're not going to kids to go into the trade around by those things. And Larry, I know I've seen you at the Chamber of Commerce um, events for uh, the kids in the schools for career day um, quite a few times, which I think is great. Yeah, we do. Uh, we do a couple of different districts. We do the uh, the career days, try and get the, you know, just get the word out what the industry holds. Um, you know, it's it's almost, uh, you know, I guess a different conversation for another. Oh. Yeah. to advertise for them i think we need to get it uh like i said my son um he's going into 11th grade he wants to go to posties for uh, heavy equipment and uh as i sat there i was elated that he was going into the trades and uh she was you know trying to discourage a little bit so you know it is unfortunately that's the way they're trying to push the kids so um you know maybe we, you're right I, alexa i think we need to do a better job getting you know our message out there 
you know, I think like with Dutchess County, I think we're very um, fortunate to have a Chamber of Commerce. You know, Frank Costella was very involved throughout the whole COVID um, pandemic and talking to business owners. And, you know, I think there is just that realization that we need to have more services local. I think about even manufacturing. Uh, I had a guy reach out to me, I think it was the end of March, and, you know, because we needed PPEs. And he said, I could get it for you in a couple of weeks. Well, guess what? We didn't get it till the end of May. We got 38,000 um, uh, masks, but still that took a long time. You know, those are the kind of things that I think that we're finding that we need uh, more of. And even talking to some business owners, there was another business owner that makes dental uh, technology, like the dental pieces. And he was trying to convert his business into making things for like ventilators uh, and making special masks that were reusable. So there is the need and, um, you know, I think the interest for, you know, a lot of innovative things. Um, that I have another question that was sent to me. If I'm only trained or certified in New York State, can I work in other states or just here? That's a great question too. I'll take the first. Uh, I know with our training, uh, our basic training is, is an EPA training, and then you get licensed through the state. Uh, so for our for our trade, you can go what they call reciprocity, um, and usually you'll go to the state uh, licensing division for whatever state it is and submit your trainings from New York uh, because it's all EPA based, uh, and then uh, you can switch from state to state. Good job. Yeah. Yeah, same here with our business. It's very limited from state to state. So you could learn my business and move to Florida or any other state if you know, there's no different certifications. I mean, certain counties, you know, for instance, Putnam County, you have to be a light a journeyman with five years experience. But, you know, it's, it, you know, but you could take that experience and go somewhere else and it would vary from, you know, what you would need. But for the most part, no. no I would say that. I would say that anybody out there who's a plumber or an electrician or just about any trade can go anywhere in the United States for sure and find work and you know whether you have to kind of take a new test or do something like that. They can try. I tell my I tell my guys if they can troubleshoot electrical work, they will never be without work no matter where they live on earth. And, you know, yeah, very true. Um, I have another question. Do you guys do, do anything with Dutchess Community College and are there opportunities for the trades through the college? I don't specifically do anything, although I do know the instructor for the um, air conditioning class, um, you know, so periodically, usually, and this year was a little different, but usually like April, I'll say, hey, do you have any students in your class? Um, I don't specifically have a formal program where I've, where I've been there, but that'd probably be a good avenue. You know, same thing with BOCES too. Yeah, I don't know about stuff community college. I do go to, I, I go to BOCES uh, you know, usually once a year and uh, proctor their exams. Kind of, you know, reach out and do what I can to volunteer with the kids. Um, but I don't know what kind of class they have it. Uh, you know, I don't know. Anybody, Alexis or Larry, did you? I know that we've, uh, um, in the past, we've had some college uh, students that have worked for us for the summer, and we've actually um, uh, filled out the uh, paperwork for internships so that they could get their college credits and whatnot. But as far as, uh, I don't think Dutchess County has a program necessarily that reaches out to the trades that I know of. I know with Brian, um, the owner of our company, he did sit on a panel for Dutchess Community College of, um, I think, one of the construction panels, but I don't think that it, ne it necessarily um, flourished from that, from that one meeting. Um, but for us, we try to work with Dutchess, um, Dutchess Community College in terms of like the kids' schedules, and we are willing to sign off on internship programs um, or if they need any kind of job shadowing, we are willing to um, sign off on that. Um, we just haven't had a lot of youths come from us from Dutch Community College, um, but we do, uh, you know, Dave and I actually speak yearly at BOCES um, with their construction programs. And we pretty much try to encourage kids as soon as they graduate to just get in touch with us and 
we're all willing to hire right out of you know high school and some of us um, for us we've developed a relationship with delhi college and we hire directly out of delhi as well and they'll let us know like hey who we have in your area and are you willing to interview with them as well so that's great you know i love the internships um, for me, I know when I was a kid, there were two different career paths I wanted to take. I wanted to be a teacher when I was really young, and then I wanted to be a dentist because I figured I could stay home and have a family, and obviously, neither one worked out. Life got in the way, <laughs> and I just went down a different path of being a business owner, um, but I think that's so important. So, so far at our office, we've had 50 interns, you know, almost 50, in the last six years and, and hired um, quite a few. So it's been, uh, it's been a great way for uh, students to learn. And, you know, you change from the time you're, you know, middle school, as you get, you know, even a little bit older. So it's nice to have that opportunity for kids to see what's out there for them. So I, I love the internships. And then do you guys also, I don't know if there's any financial aid for students that are looking to work in the trades like there is for college. Do you guys know of any programs like that for for um, students that would help pay for like an apprenticeship or? Well, the apprenticeship, at least on electrical trade, um, I, I don't, I'm not registered in New York City anymore, I was, but um, I, the kid that I just hired from the gap, he said he wanted to do classes and I told him, you know, come here, work for me, there's, there's night classes, not in Dutch County, both of these, uh, they don't have night classes, but Ultra County, both of these have them. And I'm willing to pay. We have my my company has it set up as a reimbursement. I always pay it up front, but you know they have to maintain their grades and everything like that. But I want them to school. I want them everybody to school. I want them to all be better electricians than me because that's not where I need to be good anymore. But, you know, I want them to be up on all the latest codes and going to all the classes. So I think most trades will pay for the training. I know with generators, I send uh, I, I send guy I. I commonly send guys to generator classes and I'll pay them for the like they'll be three up to five day classes and I'll pay, you know, for I'll pay their time that they're away and then also pay for the same the classes and the old and like that. So there's a lot of training or you know uh, education opportunities out there for all the trades. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we do the same. We have a training facility. So for all of our licensing classes, we do it in-house um, and they're paid uh, to sit in the training. And then anything we don't offer that they do need, uh, um, you know, through employment, we pay for, uh, uh, just like Dave's, you know, we, we send them away, we put them up in hotels, pay for the training so that they can, you know, because the better that our employees do, the more they know, the better they represent us and the further we go along with them. Yeah, and we do the same thing also. I mean, I actually have a guy right now in Pennsylvania for two weeks, um, for two weeks, that's even more. But so, yeah, we do the same thing, train in-house and then, you know, get them going through different formal trainings, you know, outside and, and pay them also and pay for the training. Yeah, and that's good. And, you know, when you train somebody too, like you're training them to the way that you want to have them, uh, right, do the, do the yeah. type of quality yeah. work. Uh, that you have. And, you know, Larry, it's interesting. I was talking about mold today because, you know, the other hat that I wear is the real estate business. And they were, I didn't realize that, like, if somebody has mold, they have, is it called a high jet? Uh, you, said, you said it before about the type of testing that you do. Industrial hygienist. Hygienist, right. Okay. Yeah. So what's involved in that? Because that was something that was interesting because it's a subject that uh, keep, seems to keep popping up. Yeah, so the New York State uh, passed their mold regulations a couple of years ago. Um, there's really two certain. Assessor and the um, mold worker, um, and it's a consumer protection law. Um, and it was kind of derived after Hurricane Sandy because, uh, I mean, guys just bought, you know, a mold contractor, put it on their truck and started telling people they got to rip their whole basements apart. So uh, the state was able to govern some of it uh, through licensing. But, um, you know, there's certain regulations. And when you get into real estate transactions and, um, you know, they're needed services. Um, so, yeah, it's part. Uh, a lot of the home inspectors are also doing it um, as a, comp you know, not complimentary, but it complements what they do and their service they provide. Um, which is, uh, you know, the mold assessments to start the remediation process if needed. Okay, 
That's good. I also have a bill that would um, provide grants to students who enter into the trades where there's a recognized need. So, and I'm always looking for ideas. You know, a lot of the ideas for our bills come from our community, uh, which is very helpful, you know, and especially anything that we can do to help our young people. Uh, you know, like I said, I, did, I definitely did not take the traditional path. And, uh, you know, but uh, I think my story is like, you can do anything that you want to do, just put your mind to it. And that there has to be other alternatives uh, for our students today. And I think especially after COVID, the, I think students are really thinking about that right now. Um, so it was nice to see some participation with some of the questions too. And um, I didn't know, did anybody have anything else that they wanted to add? Sue, are you gonna share our um, contact information? I'd be willing to, if anybody has any follow-up questions, I know there was a couple specific to environmental. Uh, they'll feel free to call me at the office and ask, ask any questions. I'll help them out, steer them in the right direction. Okay, so we, we are, Larry, we are gonna share um, everybody's information too. And um, I guess to end our conversation too, each of you could just offer the best piece of advice uh, that you have or have been given uh, for young people looking to get involved in the trades. Want to start? <laughs> um, I think the best piece of advice, like I said, is just don't be afraid to give us a call because I think all of us are willing to, you know, have you job shadow and, and learn more about our, our company. I know me personally, um, if you want to learn more about DBS or just residential remodeling in general, I'm willing to sit with you. I'm willing to take you out to the job sites. Um, I'll, I'll spend the entire day with you if need be. Um, but the best piece of advice is just don't be afraid of getting into this industry and don't, you know, it's more than swinging a hammer. It's not necessarily, um, doesn't have to be a dirty job, so to speak. Um, and uh, just, you know, get, get into it. You know what I mean? Just pick up the phone, call us, stop in, call us or whatever the case may be. We, we want to, we feel passionate about this and we want to have more youths get involved with it for sure. That's great, Alexis. Yeah, and I'll just echo kind of what everyone else has said. And I already said, just have a willingness to learn, um, be a hard worker with a, with a good attitude and be persistent um, because sometimes when you don't have experience in a trade, everyone, you know, like David said, that the one person reached out to him three times. That means, hey, I'm like serious. I want to get involved. So I would say good attitude, be persistent, you know, and a hard worker will make you a superstar, whatever you do. If you want it, you, you know, like Sue said, if you want it, you can do it, you know, just, just be persistent. I would just say, you know, the power of positive thinking, just keep positive, you know, come in with a good attitude. I mean, boy, it honestly, everything you do in life is all about attitude. You can, you can work your way out of anything as long as you keep positive attitude and just learn from your mistakes. I mean, when I first started out on my own, I made a ton of mistakes and uh, I'm happy to help anybody who um, is maybe just starting out. Like I, I help other guys who are trying to go out on their own now. Um, just to, you make a lot of mistakes, but if you just make mistakes and don't learn from them, they are wasted opportunities. So learn. I guess uh, I'd finish it up. I, I know I said it before, but for the young folks, I know a lot of times the impatience of being 20 and uh, 21 and wanting instant results, uh, sometimes, you know, they almost burn out too fast because they're ready to give up after a few months. Um, you know, the trades are just like college. It takes you years and years and years to get to the point where, um, you know, you feel accomplished, I guess, or, or you're sent out a, by yourself in your own truck and you're, you've got your own small project to do. You know, it takes a while. So have patience and, uh, you know, hard work, you know, positive thinking and, uh, uh, I think everything else that, you know, we've echoed here is just be patient and, uh, and work hard. Yeah, that's very, very true. And, you know, and you never know, like I think about, you can always change what you're doing, right? When I was uh, younger, a single mom, I had a childcare, right? 
and it's did a business so I could stay home with my son. Then I went on to real estate, which I really found a real passion for. And my real estate business is what got me involved in this crazy political world. <laughs> but it's all about helping people. So you never know what you're going to do, but there's so much opportunity out there. And I think that's what like all of us have that message for students today. And I can't thank you enough for being part of this and uh, and we'll pass your information on too because I know people will be, the students will be reaching out to you. So um, thank you from the bottom of my heart for each and every one of you doing this today with us and have a great night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Thank you.